I'm, my name is David Etheridge and I am 41 years old. I live in Long Beach, California. I am a homeowner. I bought my home here in 2003. This was, of course, just before the prices kind of went crazy. After the prices went up a bit, I refinanced and took a little bit of cash out so that I could do some remodeling. And then once the remodeling was done, that's when everything kind of started going downhill. Now, did you have one of these crazy mortgages that we've heard about that were ballooning out of control? Technically, I did have a crazy mortgage. I did have an option arm, which uh, at the time was actually a, a good choice for me. I am a realtor, and uh, I am very familiar with uh, loans and uh, everything. I was fully aware that the rate was going to be changing and the uh, payment would be going up. And during, But during the first couple years that I had this option arm, it actually worked very well for me it fit my you know the payments didn't get out of hand uh, it really wasn't until early 2008 when the uh, entire economy started going bad um, I in addition to selling real estate I have other little side jobs that I would do for income and those kind of went by the wayside because uh, you know in the bad economy I just wasn't able to you know to have those additional streams of income anymore and that's when things kind of started going bad I actually called my bank before I ever missed a single payment and I said things are looking rough for me right now is there anything you can do to help and they said we will be happy to send you a package of paper how long did it take you to get through to your bank the how, first time you called uh, I don't remember long time short time I don't remember I, I honestly have no idea but the, the problem is, uh, even though they were happy to send me these papers and I could fill out the paperwork, uh, basically they wouldn't do anything with the paperwork until you missed at least one payment. And so you tried to preempt any problems and you called them and got the paperwork, but they really wouldn't act until you actually became late. That's correct. You know, even though I told them I was going to be in trouble, they were uh, either unwilling or unable to do anything for me at that point and it wasn't until I started missing payments that you know they were actually able to you know to kind of you know put my uh, how many payments did you have to miss before they noticed three and as you were missing these three payments and you were you know trying to do something with the bank what was your mood like it was terrible. I mean, I was incredibly stressed out. I, uh, I, like I said, I wanted to kind of resolve everything before I ever had a single, you know, late payment, but, uh, you know, that didn't happen. And then as I started having to miss the payments, you know, it, I just started becoming more and more nervous. I mean, I was confident, uh, everything I was reading was telling me that, uh, the banks were going to be working with people to try to, you know, help them avoid foreclosure. Uh, so I was pretty confident that, something would happen and that you know I wouldn't wind up losing my house but still uh, at the end it was almost seven months uh, after I missed that first payment by the time they finally approved uh, a loan modification for me what happened to your confidence level over those seven months it deteriorated <laughs> significantly uh, when you, over when that you time. were assigned a woman with the bank once you missed the payment yes how easy was it to get a hold of her uh, terribly hard terribly difficult uh, I would call, she would be on vacation, somebody else uh, that would work in her department would say, oh, we'll give her the message, she'll call you when she gets back, never called, I would try again, she would say to me, oh, you know, I'm working on another file right now, let me call you back, you know, right after I'm done with this, and wouldn't call back. It was, it was incredibly difficult at that point to, you know, even really get her on the phone, and even when I did speak with her, she really didn't have any answers for me. Uh, she did have, a, as things got really close to the date, uh, I mean, there was a date... Did you think you were going to lose your house? Yes. For, for a little while, I thought it may actually come down to that. You know, I, I tried to remain as optimistic as I could, but, you know, as the date for the trustee sale, which is what the, the auction, the foreclosure auction is called, as the date for that, you know, started to get really close... Uh, my negotiator lady from the bank told me she had the authority to postpone the sale, uh, which she wound up actually having to do for a couple weeks, uh, you know, there at the end. Um, but, you know, during those last uh, probably four weeks, uh, you know, when that sale was scheduled, I was really beginning to get nervous and really thinking... When you started I to get behind, when you were like, let's say, 
two payments behind. If you had been able at that point to make one of the payments, would the bank have accepted it? No, I sent in a payment. I, when, after I had missed, I was, I think, 30 days behind at that point. And I sent in uh, another payment so that I, I had hoped to get what's called a rolling 30. In other words, you're 30 days late, you've missed one payment, but then you send in the next payment and you continue sending in your payments. So you have one payment that you're behind, uh, but you continue to pay. But instead, they sent back uh, my check since it wasn't enough to cover the actual amount that so was So the owed. bank sent back money? The bank sent back the money instead of cashing it. They sent back the payment. And so I, at that point, I just I didn't try to send any more because I never had enough to cover the whole amount. <laughs> hey, got the message. <laughs> I'll keep the money. <laughs> uh, yes.